you know, you have to yield to the coaching staff that sees things that we don't get the opportunity to see. And I'm sure they felt that that was the right play call at the right time. You know, you can argue it. It doesn't. We've said it here many times. If it works, you're a genius. If it doesn't work, you're a fool. And tonight is one of those nights when it didn't work. Hey, though, I mean, what about a quick? What about a quick slant? Why do we have to throw this big, yeah. huge fade? And we're seven yards away. I mean, what kind of offensive call is that? We, the offensive coordinator's got to take some responsibility here. Ethan's smiling at me here. He's not <laughs> no, saying just, anything. I'll just um, Jump I'm, in I'm, any I'm, time I'm, there, I'm letting, I'm, letting, I'm letting him get it Tyler, out. Tyler, thanks it, for your get call. Get it all out. Get it out. A lot of frustration in that voice. Yeah. A lot I didn't of frustration want, across the board, I think. Well, it is because, again, this team came into the season with a lot of expectations. Yep. It would be different this team had a lot of players that uh, were just starting out. Learning. I mean, you're talking about guys that there's a nucleus with this ball club. Well, so this is a was, team that they thought was built to go all the way this year. Well, they were close last year. So, yeah. I mean, that's right, rightful thinking. Yeah. So that's why you have to let them get the frustration out because yeah. they're not playing well. And then, again, you're on the seven-yard line. You've been battling all night. Actually, you were leading the, leading in yeah. the fourth quarter. And now you're in a situation where you say, okay, we can win the game, tie the game, try to win the game in overtime, but let's take our chances. But to be on the seven-yard line and come away with nothing, that's not good. No, it's not, especially when you you stop Philly, you force him to take a field goal that gives him the lead. Right. But you're well within range. You know, you're you're certainly in range to tie the ball game. And it's one of those games, it's one of those calls that can be dissected for a long time and probably will be. But four weeks to go, and the Panthers are still in the hunt. Luckily. (laughs) <laughs> Tyler, thanks for calling us tonight. Hey, with the Dick Sporting Goods Quarterback Challenge, more passing yards means more savings. When a Panthers quarterback throws for more than 200 yards in a home game, bring your ticket to any Charlotte area Dick Sporting Goods location. Receive a coupon for $10 off your next purchase of $50 or more. The tickets have to be redeemed within one week of the game, and that is because every season starts at Dick's. And we'll be right back with more. For more action. This is the CPI Security Systems Post Game Show, live from Bank of America Stadium. Touchdown! Touchdown! Carolina Panthers! Yes! Touchdown! Reaction and analysis to today's game with your phone calls, special guests, and updates from around the league. Smith got a touchdown! Wow. Carolina Panthers! Wow! Now to Rick Benjamin and Ethan Horton with the CPI Security Systems Post Game Show, exclusively on the Carolina Panthers Radio Network. And we welcome you back live here at Bank of America Stadium. Thanks for staying up late with us tonight, the CPI Security Systems post-game show. Give us a call at 704-358-7734 or toll-free at 800-941-6846. Lots to talk about, certainly. The Panthers fall on the road to Philadelphia, 27-24. Both the Panthers and the Eagles now 6-6, and along with the Giants and Atlanta, a four-way log jam gunning for those wild card spots, and the Giants will be in town Sunday. And our caller of the morning, I guess you'd say, wins yep. a pair of tickets. To see the Giants here next week, the 10th, it is a 1 o'clock kickoff here at Bank of America Stadium. So uh, it'll be a big one because both teams 6-6, six and six and Ethan, you say that's an elimination game. No, I think so. playoff picture. Because everybody's right there together. You got a four teams 6-6 six yeah. and six and somebody must lose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the bottom line. Could right. be a tie. Never well, know. Could be. Well, you would like to think the Panthers. A home game. A home game. Yeah. They, they were in the driver's seat. Right now, they're no longer in the driver's seat. Well, you, you know, you think the Eagles are a wounded team, and they are without Donovan McNabb and uh, without much of a running attack. Brian Westbrook, though, had uh, 16 carries for 68 tonight, yeah. and that is more than we would have probably have expected. And Brian Westbrook is uh, not a kid anymore. No, I mean, uh, if you look at the teams that are remaining, you would like to think that you look at the Eagles. Yeah. Obviously, Carolina. I would not have given the Eagles any chance to make the playoffs once Donovan no, McNabb went down. the Giants. All four teams are struggling in their yeah. own ways. So you almost have to flip a coin to decide, okay, yeah. which team can I feel good about? Because every week is a different team that shows up. Well, uh, you know, certainly the Eagles said, hey, they've got some life. Dante Stallworth is back from injury and had a big night tonight. And, uh, you know, a lot, lot can happen in these next four weeks. It's the Giants next week, then Pittsburgh here, the final regular season home game, then at Atlanta and New Orleans to close things out in the NFC South. So next time you're in the market for a copy or fax or printer, give Toshiba Business Solutions a call. Serving the Carolinas more than 30 years, Toshiba is the official office equipment and solutions provider for the Carolina Panthers. Call 800-277-2030 to learn more. Art and Gaffney, you're next on the CPI Security Systems Post Game Show. Good morning, guys. You guys do a fantastic job. I appreciate your post game show. Um, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I was in the barbershop Saturday 
and we were discussing the Panthers, me and some other guys, and we all said the same thing. Dan Henning must go. Now, you got to point blame somewhere. This is too many times at the end of the game where the play calling is killing us. Last week, it's third and long. We run a draw play. This week, we're on the seven-yard line, 38 seconds left, and two timeouts. At worst, you're going to get a field goal and tie this thing up, go to overtime, take your chances. And we're throwing but that way, let, let, let me, Art, 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 let me stop you there. I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong here, it would not be Dan Henning's decision to go for the field goal or, or run from scrimmage in that situation. That would be a John Fox call, wouldn't it? At where they were no, they still office coordinator calling the plays. But to call for a field goal? Oh, I mean that was after have to have gone over on down or in the, the, we'll get the, the fourth downs. down. Yeah, get the fourth down. Yeah. But see, so, it was first down from the seven. Right. We have been smashing them in the mouth on that drive on the run. Well, I, I the way. Whoa, 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 hold, hold on a second. Panthers ran for 108 yards tonight. I don't think you can say they were smashing them in the mouth. That last drive we did. We were wearing them down that last drive. We ran the ball right down their throat. That's how we got down to the seven. That reversed to Steve Smith. So I'm saying you got two timeouts. At worst, you're going to get a field goal. Certainly uh, true. Somebody has to take the blame is all I'm saying. And, and you guys, I know you don't want to listen to negativity. No, no, no. Hey. Be up about no, 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 but. no. Art, believe me, there's plenty, to, there's plenty of negative things to think about in this situation here, but – you know, I, I in this case, I Arthur, do. There's, there's six losses. Yeah, there, there's six losses for a reason or reasons. If you want to look, there's at plenty each of game. blame to go around. Oh, plenty of blame. Yeah, there's a lot of blame, and I, I'm pretty sure that uh, the blame is going around. Trust me. Well, let me say this, and I'll I'll let you go. Let me say this. I felt like last week Washington was so prepared for Henning's offense, it was ridiculous. I, I mean, second they that. They were all over us. So. I'm just saying the blame has to go somewhere, and I don't think it's John Fox. I think it's Dan Henning. That's my opinion, and yeah. I'm I'm going to stick to that because that's too many. You're not alone in that. Let's let's put it that way. That we haven't won. You know, right? Too many. Uh, Art, Thank thanks. You. Thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I, Dan Henning is a is a regular whipping boy on these shows as, in the last year and a half. Comes with the territory. It comes with the territory when you're six and six. Right, but. I, you know, he doesn't throw the ball. No, nope. he and doesn't the defense catch gave the ball. Him Twenty-four points to I mean, yeah, that's way too many points. I mean, to a backup quarterback who's thirty-seven years that's old. That's where I'm going, and really one-dimensional on offense. Because again, the well, it didn't seem like it tonight, but Brian Westbrook is really their offense. Yeah, but when you get some help and you have some confidence, I mean, good things will happen. Something that this offense does not have right now. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of like, really, like I said, a lot of blame to go. You got to look at the defense. Defense. Are they at fault? The answer is yes. Because I, you, you would like to think, again, with what we've just stated, as far as the offense of the Eagles, there should not have been enough firepower to put up 27 points on, yeah. this, on this defense based on you go back to the Rams game. So you know this defense has the ability to dominate. It just hasn't happened since the Rams game. Right. And I don't know if it's a scheme, players, don't know, because can't see all the tape, but obviously there's some problems on that side of the football. I mean, they got Richard Marshall yeah. on that one long pass play to start. The coverage was there. I mean, he had he was in a different decent position. You know, better pass. Yeah. They practiced too. They practiced too. Now some of the other plays where the receivers were wide open in our secondary can't answer that question. Yeah. It's just one of those it's a head scratcher, no question about it. Against a team that you would think you would beat on the road. And and you know, as we say, when you need a stop, you yeah. gotta make it. Well, only that look at the go back to the Washington game. Don't yep. think this this team did not view that tape. I mean, they sure. did. I mean, what other tape would they, they – they probably didn't look at anything else. Really? Because – well, I'm sure season. they did, but they probably focused a lot more on the Washington game because, yeah. A, the running game was not existent, and, B, 89 was out of the game. So, they figure anytime you can take him out of the game, although there was a better job of distribu- distribution of the football tonight, but you got to think you take 89 out of the game, that, that ball game's over. Yeah, uh, Steve Smith tonight, four catches for 54 yards, did have the touchdown catch. One of those, of the 54 yards, 38 came on one play. So, really...